What is up guys? Thank you so much for watching. Uh, in this video we're making a coral trap diving popper. I've had the request to make a um, diving popper in that style. Um, this one's actually for uh, a younger fella that wanted to have this type of diving popper. So uh, we made sure it was uh, an easy to use lure. As you can see here it ends up swimming really well. Even on a straight retrieve. Real, wiggles real good, so uh, yeah, pretty happy with the result. Hopefully, um, the person who ordered it uh, is as well. See how we go. Now, I'm sure if, that some of you might scratch their head and go, What the hell is a coral trout? It essentially refers to a uh, species of grouper that you have in the Pacific. Uh, they range from about as far east as uh, the Cook Islands and Pol uh, Polynesia, French Polynesia and as far west as the Red Sea. So I've already made a couple of diving poppers in the past and I happen to have a uh, blank left. Now, uh, the only thing was, the request was that it was a diving popper of around 100 grams. So uh, just as a comparison here, here's one of the diving poppers I made earlier. This is an upside down diving popper. Weighs a lot heavier than 100 grams, almost twice as much. And just the blank by itself already weighed 75 grams. So obviously we had to do some uh, adjusting. Now that's not too big of an issue. Uh, first of all, we can make the lure a fair bit shorter. And on top of that, we can uh, also thin out the wood as well. Now this obviously does two things. Um, it reduces the wood weight, but since the wood is floating, it also reduces the weight that we actually have to put in it to balance it out. Uh, on top of that, the wire that we put internally in will be shorter. So yeah, that all adds up to uh, reducing the total weight of the lure. Now, it is one thing that is underestimated how much the wire weighs, because we use pretty heavy duty stainless steel wire, uh, and it ends up weighing about an ounce usually, so that's uh, quite significant. Uh, it's important to take into the consideration uh, when you balance out the lure, uh, total weighted lure, etc. So here we just uh, get started on um, reducing the uh, amount of wood on the body. It's pretty straightforward. I just have to carve it all off and uh, kind of go from there. Now if you're wondering how I made the initial blank, uh, go to my previous diving popper making video. Uh, that one goes very specific into uh, how we start from scratch, which is just plank of wood, obviously. Uh, here we have it kind of fixed off. The only thing is we have to consider that we want to make the tail, uh, tail a bit thinner. Uh, this is to improve the action. Uh, the less drag on the tail quite often the better, depending on the model of lure that you're building. Sometimes stick baits actually uh, uh, work better with a thicker tail. Um, but in this case, a diving popper, all the action is actually determined by the cup and the mouth and the bottom lip of the lure. And so we want to reduce that drag on the tail. And here you see me reduce the lure till the tail is about rounded off. Uh, obviously you have to balance out uh, the two things uh, between the action of the tail as well as the strength of the wood there because you want to make sure that the wood doesn't just break off uh, while a GT chews on uh, both the belly and the tail hook. So we have, here we are uh, just pretty much sanding it off. It's pretty straightforward and just double checking if everything is symmetrical. Now, this is something I did want to show you. Uh, in my um, diving popper making video that I made previously, I actually end up cutting a slit all the way through the lip, but it's actually much easier just to drill a hole from the cup to the belly, so that way you don't have to fix the, the lip once the wire is set in. You'll see what I mean in a little bit. Uh, I end up cutting the slit further down as usual, just with the drill. Uh, this works perfectly well. This is actually a two millimeter drill, uh, and that's perfect for the wire that I'll be fitting in it. Actually, makes pretty quick work of it. Obviously, we're drilling a lot deeper than that eventually, but we have to get started somewhere. You'll see once I put the internal wiring in, how much easier it is to fix uh, the cut mount. As I did have a couple of questions about that in the previous video about diving poppers. So here we've got the front end done of the wiring. Now you'll see 
the slit doesn't continue all the way through the lip but actually drills into the cup and I can just insert, insert the uh, wire like this and it will pop out there now that prevents me from having to completely fix the lip in with uh, super glue and uh, sawdust much easier job you still have to do a little bit obviously but uh, it's going to be much easier to do then completely uh, cutting through the lip so here we've already uh, kind of fixed in the wire uh, we've uh, inserted the weights in the tail as well as you can see there's two weights there with a total of uh, one ounce so um, there, there you know um, how much weight I actually put in this lure as well um, each weight that I've put in is about half an ounce so that actually made this lure balance very well um, now we're just fixing the rest in with sawdust now I'll uh, say it again and I've said it before in previous videos don't just focus on the weight that you put in the tail you have to always take into consideration the hook that you're using even for smaller lures it's very important but it's even more important for your bigger lures simply because your bigger lures are much more affected by the hooks that you're using uh, GT fishing, dock tooth fishing, whatever you're catching on the reef it's a tough business uh, your hooks have to be upstanded and usually your hooks weigh anywhere from 10 grams to uh, half an ounce so uh, those are uh, very significant factors that you have to take into consideration don't know how big the hooks will be what we fit on this lure because it's only a hundred gram lure but um, you definitely have to take into account the weight of the, the hooks anyway continuing on uh, once everything is fixed in we obviously send it off and then we give it a primer coat uh, that's what we've done here this looks nice and smooth and um, it's ready to get artistic so we are doing some foiling even though this lure will end up mainly red I still wanted to have some scale patterns in there um, even there might be uh, only very few showing it's always good to get a bit of re reflective material underneath um, so obviously we'll speed this process up a little bit because it's quite tedious I've uh, done this in many other videos for many other lures um, but we are doing a, a foiling pattern on here it's just a matter of uh, crisscrossing uh, the pattern and the lateral line and uh, yeah pretty straightforward if you want to see a more in-depth uh, video of how I actually do the scale pattern I've got a couple of videos on my channel where you can actually have a better look at it Cool, so we got two equal halves, uh, we'll just put these together and then we can actually cut out the shape of the, uh, the foil that we want to use. We're going to have some uh, separate pieces for the face, so the gills, the face, the cut out of the eyes, that's what we're drawing on here. And now I'm making sure that it's a nice thick line, we're cutting on both sides of the line so that there's a bit of space in between the foiling so that the uh, paint underneath the uh, foil will show through and that uh, give it a pretty decent look on the lure making sure I measured everything out here that's looking good so now we uh, spray a bit of extra paint to give it a bit of contrast we start off with blue now um, as you may or may not know there's various coral tribe species and they come with a good couple of different color patterns uh, but one of the more common ones is the the footballer trout uh, and then you also got the bar cheek trout um, they've got some lighter and darker uh, patches of red and uh, yeah, deep red uh, along their body so uh, we'll be spraying over this with a with a red paint and it'll kind of give some contrast on the body itself just in case you're wondering trout is just a terminology name they're obviously not a trout they're not remotely related I have no idea why they're called that way but I'm sure it might have something to do with the uh, early Victorian settlers that came to Australia or into the area anyway they must have thought hmm colorful fish looks like a rainbow trout we call it trout from now on so. 
but that's just a stab in the dark. Anyway, uh, here we're just spraying the red over the blue. And you can see that it gives a bit of a, a contrast. There's a couple of different hues of uh, red on there. 50 shades of red. No, we're not going that way. Um, either way, that will do for now. We still have to put the foil on, so. Cool. Now we'll just start off with the um, front end of the, the popper, the diving popper I shall say. This uh, makes it easier to fit all the rest of the foil on. Um, if I were to start with the, the tail end, it might, I might have some trouble later on uh, fitting all the face pieces on in the exact same spot that I want them. So with this type of foiling, you're, you're better off starting from the front. There we go, that's the cheek piece. Then we have the first gill cover. And as you can see, I leave a bit of space in between the foiling, so you can see the outlines where the cheek piece and the uh, gill piece start and end. That's looking pretty good. Now the uh, scale pattern uh, obviously does two things. One, it looks uh, looks pretty good, and two, it actually gives me a bit of an indicator where I should continue with the uh, the other part of the foiling because if I've cut it up in a couple of different pieces, uh, then you might kind of lose track of uh, the angle that I have to stick it on or uh, what height I have to stick the foiling on. But uh, the lateral line and the scales uh, actually help me with that, so that's pretty cool. Uh, this is just as always uh, start from the middle and uh, kind of stick it out along the sides later on to prevent any wrinkling from happening uh, but as, again there's a couple of videos on that on my channel if you want to see how I do that in more depth uh, at the tail is always a tricky bit but we can cut those sides and uh, prevent them uh, bubbles from happening and here we kind of have the finished foiling product and honestly just by itself it would be perfectly uh, fine to uh, uh, have it epoxied while well, you've got a couple of googly eyes on top of it and that would look really good uh, but again the request was coral trout so we'll stick to it Here we're just sticking some blue tape onto the side of the lure. Uh, reason being, I'm going to paint around it with some uh, blue paint. Spray over it with red. And then later on we'll uh, take it off and you still have a nice and clean um, scale pattern underneath. Which will look pretty neat, if done correctly. So here's the finished uh, taping job. As you can see where all the spots will be. And then we just paint over it with some blue paint just around it kind of gives it a uh, almost kind of like a leopard pattern will look pretty cool Now this looks a little bit messy, but uh, it'll come out alright. We'll spray over it with some red paint and then epoxy it. And um, it will be a little bit spotty, but that's actually um, quite good because uh, coral trout's pattern is very spotty. It's got a lot of little spots and pigment colors uh, all over the place, so that's perfect. So here we're taking the tape off. Moment Supreme. See if it all kind of works out that way. All right, let's speed this thing up. That's looking pretty good. The 
it's a bit tedious, but it actually uh, is quite a cool effect. So I'm pretty happy with it. All we need is some big googly eyes on top and uh, some epoxy and uh, should be ready. Here we've got the eyes. Now these are uh, custom made. They are printed on a special um, sticker vinyl. Uh, I actually designed these eyes for this lure because uh, Coral Trout have got like a quite a specific type of eye. They usually like brightly colored eyes and they sit quite high up on their uh, skull so I had to kind of adjust the size adjust the color for what I usually use um, so I could fit it into the design there you have it all ready for the first epoxy coat Now the um, epoxy that I use is quite a thick epoxy. Uh, you only really need one coat to um, properly cover the lure. However, um, this is not so much the case with stick baits as it is with diving with uh, as it is with poppers. Um, poppers quite often get damaged on the cup, and that kind of makes them. Well, you can still use them depending on how bad the damage is, but we made an extra thick uh, layer around the the cup of the lure so they can resist uh, damage without affecting the action of the lure and this lure has actually got two coats because the uh, uh, person uh, of interest is actually intending on using this lure for Spanish mackerel as well or as you call them in the US king mackerel so uh, yeah they need to resist a fair bit of abuse now here you see me put on some uh, thick two millimeter wire coils uh, I put these on instead of hooks simply because um, hooks will damage the, the coat of the lure um, and these have actually got blunted tips so uh, uh, they just kind of are put in substitute for the hooks but it works really well so here you'll see the action in the pool now unfortunately in Texas here we've had a lot of rain recently and the pool has been very dirty can't really swim in it and the visibility is crap so um, I got this top view first so you at least get an idea of how it swims. You don't even need to give it a big sweep. If you just do a steady retrieve, it's good enough. You see that here underwater, the visibility is absolutely horrific. So, uh, but I've put together from the underwater uh, view as much as I could. The wiggle is great, it uh, leaves a bubble trail as well. Um, unfortunately we're not learning much from this underwater footage but I did actually um, add some highly contrasted footage um, from underwater as well you'll see that after this we actually see the lure a little bit better Here you'll see it wiggle off into the distance that's about as uh, good as the underwater footage get well, underwater footage gets at the moment so well, anyway, uh, I hope you like your lure, mate. Um, if not, don't worry about it, because I'll happily keep it. I love this lure. I'll probably make a couple more. Um, thank you guys for watching. Um, let me know in the comments what ne what uh, type of lure you'd like to see next. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.